Hey guys, I'm Gaspachian. Um, so what the hell happened to this series? There hasn't been an episode in about a year, I think. Right, that was absolutely my intention. So, I've been uh, looking back at what we have here, and uh, first, let me tell you, it was a misguided effort. Like, um, well, the whole point of the series, as it stood, was to, well, take, take your average Kerbal Let's Play, uh, up the challenge by about ten times, and uh, somehow still prevail, somehow still put out uh, content with uh, quite a high production value and still churn it out on a regular schedule. Yeah, well, I recorded everything I did, but so much of it was just boring, repetitive, it was just fun grinding um, because there's actual effort put in here and uh, that's going to show in the end product. Well, it didn't because, well, the effort was something I couldn't really put on screen. First of all, we have the issue that the series was made in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. Now, if you've picked up Kerbal Space Program since the release of 1.1, you won't remember the insanely horrific performance Kerbal Space Program had before 1.1. It was at times nearly unplayable. Now add to that, that um, while well, the whole series was sort of formulated as a workaround around the fact that Kerbal Space Program was a 32-bit application back then. But that, that put a hard limit on the amount of parts I could have in the game. And that hard limit, given the long-term uh, plans I had for the series, uh, the whole delve into Vasimir engines, let's delve into... Uh, uh, solar electric propulsion, let's do all of that down the line. Well, I had to have those parts in, in the playthrough. Well, with a very restricted part count limit, that made the whole thing... Uh, in, in one era, I would have a particular engine to work with. So, what was the plan to work around that? Well, that was tweak scale and... Well, tweak scale and P parts, uh, procedural parts, were my go-to thing. I, I couldn't work around those. I had to work with them. But they kept giving me so much trouble. I showed off the engine bell issues. That would show off in almost every launch. Now, to to try to work around that would mean, well, I, I'd have to restart the game all, uh, like every two out of three launches or whatever. And... Uh, with all the mods, with all the module manager patches and all that, uh, the game took about six minutes, seven minutes to boot up. Now, if I want to do a launch and it fails three or four times in a row because of engine build displacement, and I have to start over three or four times, well, that's that's half an hour of my life just, just to get off the launch pad. And I mean, well, that's realistic, I guess, because, well, pre-launch countdowns are usually very long with all the checks and uh, and things that go into it but it's it's not good it's not good entertainment not for you and because well that ends up being cut content and it's not good entertainment for me because I could rather launch rockets for those 21 to 40 minutes or whatever and uh, well the game wouldn't let me in this playthrough so I would just get very frustrated and uh, well, consider not continuing the playthrough, which is sort of where I'm at. Also, uh, well, the workload, again, trying to trying to take this uh, uncut stone uh, that is this playthrough and, uh, and actually turn it into something with a high production value, like I, I, I do all these transitions, I add background music, which is royalty-free, of course, uh, when uh, when the visuals, again, are very limited by what I could do with the uh, amount of RAM I had available to me to play around with in in 32-bit Kerbal Space Program. That, again, hampers the, uh, the end product where you'd... Well, 
you'd, you'd have a half finished product in the end like uh, well the, the the editing and and so it's visually impressive from from a playthrough perspective but uh, it doesn't really add to anything like it doesn't it doesn't carry the whole playthrough which uh, got very repetitive and uh, sort of pointless at times if i if, if i just had like a highlights reel or something if i just did like a, a focus like hey this is how you could do a moonshot hey this is how how you can do a launch script etc instead of doing a continuous playthrough maybe that would have been a better format for it but still again the amount of play time necessary to actually get get that end product would also be um, inhibitive to to actually putting that content out so you got to take the good with the bad i c- i couldn't find a way to actually produce more content uh, from this series at a, a higher pace without it being terry bad like re- re- really re- really shitty now this series was also formulated around a very arbitrary challenge where i said well okay we're going to work with um with 64k or 6.4x as it's called right now working with stock configs for engines not using smurf or anything to boot or or, well realism overall or anything to boost like engine efficiency or or reduce the dry mass of tanks well the financial balancing of it of it all it, it it didn't boil down to something that didn't take a lot of grinding i had to grind a lot because well the cost to rewards of uh, of most contracts were that well okay i can get w- below the reward limit but that means i just break even it's like yeah okay i get that flyby done the only gain is the science i don't get any money from doing that flyby i, I b- barely break even and uh, that prohibits me from building up a bank building me up uh, the, the capabilities of my space program allowing me to build bigger and bigger boosters and uh, and get well more and more ambitious missions done no i'm constantly limited to to the bank i have at the moment which was pretty much always flat bottomed out so um, so if i if a contract didn't come with a high enough reward then i couldn't do it i i i, I, I could like grind out 10 satellite contracts and then maybe do it but those 10 satellite contracts well that that would be like 10 hours worth of play time to 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 get those done and uh, then i could do whatever contract and then i would have to do 10 more satellite contracts and like yeah well maybe if i just like made it a bit easier for myself maybe if i used smurf maybe if i just increased the contract rewards modifier to to some insane amounts so i could just progress that would have been ideal but uh, but again i wanted i wanted to challenge myself but the real crux about it is it's a very arbitrary challenge to set my, for myself like it's like well, am I doing good? Am I doing bad? I don't know. No one else has done it. It's my own configurations. It's my own pick of mods. And then, like, well, okay, this is hard because I p- picked that mod. Well, okay, why did I pick that mod? Does it add to the playthrough? Maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have picked that mod. Maybe it's more important to churn out content and make things in- more interesting that way. Like, yeah, some, some mods add interesting challenges, like Remote Tech, for instance. That's that's an interesting challenge. It applies to a- any solar system you play in, but um, but like nerfing reaction wheels, so I don't have any reaction control thrusters or reaction wheels before. Like, well, so far in the series, you haven't seen any reaction wheels or control thrusters, so I have to use these these solid rocket motors to 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 adjust my uh, yeah. Like what? What was that? That that doesn't ever apply in in a playthrough other than this one, does it? Like wh- when would you need when would you need solid rocket motors to turn yourself in space? You don't. You don't ever. It does. It doesn't apply. So so the challenge, in and of itself, was very very arbitrary. 
I uh, I could have set myself up for more interesting challenges, more ch- more challenges that apply to stock, more challenges that apply to realism overhaul. But no, I, I set up myself up a very unique set of challenges and presented the solutions to those challenges when they, once again, never apply. You don't learn anything. You learn specific tricks to, to get around a, uh, an obstacle that doesn't exist in your case. So, yeah. Finally, like, what was up with the narration? I, I, I can tell you right now, like, I, I still have the uh, scripts for the episodes r- written down. Like, it's like 3,500 words that I just sit and r- read straight off the paper. I, I, I don't use key points or anything. I've just written down paragraphs upon paragraphs of mumbo jumbo. It's like, well, other streamers talk a lot. Well, they don't talk like that. They add in interesting anecdotes. Yeah, I tried adding in interesting anecdotes, but it came up out very stilted. It wasn't actually what I wanted to talk about at that point. It didn't. It didn't add any comedy or anything to it it never felt natural uh the first episodes were a bit more free form but what i realized was that i mumble a lot and i stutter a lot and that's that's actually f- fine if you look at other streamers like they do it a lot as well and of course i i, I have the language barrier to work against i i'm not a na- native english speaker so i i will end up fumbling for words at times. That's fine. But uh, the narration for this series, while some of you have applauded it, like, I- I'm not at all happy with how it turned out. I'm just going to say that. So, with all of these issues looked at, I mean, I, I don't have solutions to most of these issues. Like, the, the-, the fact remains, I have a backlog of... Uh, of missions that haven't been published to the channel yet. And um, I left it off right at my manned moonshot. Again, this this must be after like 400, five hour, 500 hours of recorded content. Um, I got to uh, the point where I could, well, not easily, but sort of, sort of hackishly do a manned moonshot. And this was with a with a low carbon orbit rendezvous. Point is, uh, I couldn't get that mission off off the ground. Like I I, I launched the I, I I set myself up for it. Like I I said, okay, well, if I'm going to finish this series at some point before it drives me nuts, it's going to be with this mission. I like go out in style, because well, that's that's obviously the peak. Like where, where where it's actually hard to go to the moon. Well, then getting getting a person to the moon and back is uh, obviously the uh, the high point of that career. It would have been a, a send off. It would have said, well, okay, this this took five hundred hours. This was an effort. Uh, it's been an epic adventure getting here. But actually getting that done would sort of show that okay, I could do it. I could do it with, with with a funding constraint. I, I could actually pull through. Thing is, I never, I, I couldn't ever finish that mission. Like I, I, I had the, uh, I had ser- service module in orbit and uh, went for the rendezvous, but it kept on crashing. Like I couldn't ever launch that second piece of the mission. And uh, and in the end, I just ended up so frustrated with that install that I haven't touched it since. Uh, I haven't tried it. I haven't gotten it to work at all. Uh, so uh, that coupled with um, a few personal issues, I, uh, this past year hasn't been the best for me, um, meant that, well, the series was dead and buried. Like, I, I, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't give it the, the proper send-off. So I felt like, well, why even make another episode? Because it's just going to run in, out into the sand as it has. Like, doesn't matter if it ends on episode 8 or episode 12. If it's just, like, this going out with a fist rather than a bang, then... It doesn't matter. 
it's like four uh, another four or five episodes um, that won't make a difference. It would be equally unsatisfactory watching it on like that. The I, I I have a few avenues going forwards, like what I could do. Like I could I could take the backlog, seeing as I have a few more missions, like a, a couple more episodes down the drain. I ha- I do some interesting stuff along the way. I set up a launch script. I talked about that in episode one. So so all the launches are automated. I uh, play around some with um, the uh, KSP transfer optimization tools and show off of how that works, which is uh, really useful, actually, if you're playing with something like uh, Real Solar System or whatever. Uh, it's It's got its uses in stock as well, but uh, that's mostly for finding good gravity assist windows. Uh, in The point is, like, you, get, getting the right parking orbit is, is such a useful concept that... Um, not not knowing how to use that tool can really hinder your progress in 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 RSS. Like I I never see any any other streamer use that tool, and uh, and then they just end up using thousands of extra delta v on their or on their uh, Earth departure burns. So I, I I really wanted to to show off that that video at least. Like there's a couple of other neat tricks. So um, getting those episodes released, well, that that could be a thing. So that that just leaves well, the post mortem really. Like, well, okay, what what am I going to do next? What what have I learned from this series? Well, the first thing is probably to standardize your challenges. I I, I won't do another series where I just roll my own config. Well, okay, I'm going to do another series where I roll my own configs. But hey hey, there's there's a point to this. RP0, like with with realism overhaul and real solar system. Like there's there's no point in not playing that. If you want to challenge, that's where it's at. It's it's a standardized challenge. It's got balancing, it's got people devoted to making it work, to making it realistic, to making everything make sense in context. Like it's there there's no Oh hey, you don't have any reaction wheels. Let's strap on solid rocket boosters so you can turn in space. No, that that doesn't apply. It's like, well, okay, you don't you don't have powerful reaction wheels in RPC either, but you you do have cold nitrogen thrusters. Like that that's a thing. That's a thing that is based on something real. So, what little commentary I could add in the series? came out to be well I couldn't really add any, any any comedy to the commentary because well there there was so little of it that like I, I couldn't really work that in uh, coupled with the uh, the uh, format for for the post commentary where I just read off the paragraphs line by line like that didn't that didn't lend itself to comedic timing as well as I I could pull off in a more dynamic setting. I mean, I, I'm a funny guy. I, I'm, I'm hilarious. Uh, right. Uh, but uh, like moving on, that's that's something I, I'm going to do. Like I'm I'm going to finish off uh, my uh, current RP0 campaign in style, the 1.1.3 one. I, I'll show off some some stuff I've done there. In, uh, in some sort of release schedule where you alternate between that and uh, working through the, uh, the backlog I, I still have left from this series, seeing if there's anything of interest. Like, I know there's, again, I know there's a couple of things. Meanwhile, working up to a point where I'm, I'm ready and able to, to properly start uh, a more well thought out playthrough in uh, 1.2.2. And I'm sure you'll all enjoy it immensely. Like, if, if you like this series, uh, whatever there is to like about it, uh, this next series is going to blow your minds. It's, it's just so much better. And, um, and uh, that's, that's that. Like, TLDR. Uh, series sucked because it took too long to produce anything. Uh, also because it's 
based on constraints that don't really apply anymore. Uh, we're going to move forwards, we're going to finish it off in a slightly different format. Uh, we are going to cut all ties to these, uh, these alternate uh, solar system things. Just, just go for the tri tried and tested real solar system with, uh, with the RO configs, with the RP0 and, uh, and get that running. And it's going to be awesome. Like, stick around, watch this space. This, uh, watch this space. See, I am a funny guy. This is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. I'll see you guys later.